Today, I'm going to show you the first four things that you need to do to your new pre-built system in order to set it up properly. But before that, we have a sponsor on today's video, Linode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode, which is an affordable, powerful way to host Linux-based servers in the cloud. If you want to host your own game servers, Linode is for you. They support games like Rust, CSGO, and Minecraft. The Java edition, which we all know is clearly superior to the Bedrock edition. Also, if you need a VPN to surf the internet without prying eyes looking in, Linode has you covered with easy one-click installs for personal VPNs like WireGuide and OpenVPN. The best part about setting up your personal VPN server is that you can be sure that there isn't a middleman company looking to sell your data. Linode has some of the best customer support in the business. I mean, just look at how seriously this dude takes his customer support. Regardless of your pay tier, you'll get through to a person that'll help Help you sort out your problem. If this sounds good, sign up using the link in my description for a hundred dollars 60 day credit. Thank you very much Linode for sponsoring this video. Step number one is throw it in the trash. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm sorry, please don't click off the video. Step number one, for real this time, is open it up and make sure that there isn't any packing material inside of the system. Because if you fire it up with packing material inside, fire will inevitably happen. And then while we're in there, we're gonna get to step number two, which is make sure that all of the connectors are plugged in properly. Now I know, when you're buying a pre-built, you're essentially paying someone to plug those connectors in for you, but you'll be surprised how often there's just a loose connector somewhere especially when it comes to power connectors, which look like this. They're like big block connectors with like a clip that keeps it in place. Now, an easy way to make sure that they're not in all the way is they have this little latch, which keeps them in place once they're plugged in. Make sure that that's clipped down and then they should be safe. If they're not, just put some pressure on it until that clip clasps in place and then you're good. Now, once you've made sure that everything's nice and secure inside there, you can put the side panel back on and set up the system to turn it on. A little bit of a bonus tip here while you're setting up your system, make sure to plug your monitor into the graphics card and not into the motherboard's outputs. Which brings us to step number three, which in my opinion is by far the most important one. You need to reinstall Windows on your new pre-built. Again, this may sound a bit weird considering that it comes with a fresh install of Windows on it, but a lot of these companies add so much unwanted software that it makes Windows unstable. I think the technical term for that unwanted software is PC venereal disease. And as we all know, venereal disease is bad. Now you could just go and uninstall a bunch of the venereal disease software, but honestly, it's just easier to reinstall Windows and then you can set it up the way that you like. Now I'm gonna show you the way which I install Windows, which is not necessarily the best way to install Windows, but it's, it's just very straightforward. If you're interested in other ways to go about installing Windows, I'll have a couple of videos linked in the description below. Now there are a couple of things that you're gonna need before you start with this process. The first is a flash drive that's either eight gigs or bigger. And then you need to make sure that you back up all of the important data that you have on the system that you're reinstalling Windows on and the flash drive that you're using because this process just deletes everything and then starts from new. So if you have all this stuff, let's get into the process of reinstalling Windows. Now, first things first, you need to get Windows onto this flash drive. Luckily, that's very easy to do. All you need to do is Google Windows install and then use this link to Microsoft's website where they have a media creation tool that you download. Again, this is just a very straightforward way of doing it. Now, go ahead and open the tool that you just downloaded, wait for it to launch, and then accept the applicable notices and license terms. After it gets a few things ready, you just select Create Installation Media and click Next. At this point, I would just recommend using the recommended options for this PC. If you're using a different system, just make sure that you're using the 64-bit architecture. Now, select USB flash drive and click Next. Here, it'll give you a list of removable drives that you have plugged into the system. Just make sure that you're using the correct flash drive and that it doesn't have any important information on it because remember, it's gonna delete everything that's on there at the moment. Once you've confirmed it's the correct flash drive, click next and then wait for the Windows 10 setup to finish downloading Windows and installing it. This process can potentially take quite long depending on the speed of your internet and if it takes a while, don't worry about it. Once the Windows 10 setup is finished, click finish and then safely remove the flash drive from the system. 
Now at this point, switch off the pre-built and then plug the flash drive into the system. After doing this, press the power button and then press F12 to display the boot menu just as the system launches. Now the actual shortcut to display boot menu does change depending on some systems. It could be either F12, F11 or F2, but it should tell you in the bottom left which key to use. If it doesn't show you, just Google it for the specific PC that you have. Now just after you press the power button, start smacking that display boot menu key like it owes you money until this screen shows up, where you select the UEFI USB flash disk boot device, which will start the installation of Windows 10. Once you get to this point, select the language that you want to install, the time and currency format, and the keyboard input method that you want. There will be more applicable notices and license terms, just accept them then click custom install. Now at this point, it'll show you all of the hard drives and partitions that you have in the system. Identify which one is the SSD or the drive that you want to install Windows on. Now what I do at this point is delete all of the partitions for the drive that we want to install Windows on until we're left with just a chunk of unallocated space for that drive leave the other drives alone. You can split it into various partitions if you wanted to, and then select the one that you want to install Windows on and then click next. Now all you need to do is wait for the installation to finish. Once it's finished, this window will pop up, giving you 10 seconds to unplug the boot flash drive with Windows on it. At this point, the PC will restart and you'll be prompted to set up Windows. Now select the region that you're in and then select the keyboard layout that you wanna use. At this point, Windows will ask to connect to the internet. Now I usually finish the installation and the setup process with no internet connected. So I just click on, I don't have internet and then I'll connect internet later on. Windows will then very passive aggressively ask you to continue with limited setup, just pound that button with pride. Once the system's restarted, you can carry on setting up the system. It'll ask you what to name the PC, an opportunity which you shouldn't waste. And then after that, my standard response to all of the other questions is just no and don't allow until you get to the desktop. You know, I personally just like to play hard to get with Windows installations. And there you have it, a fresh install of Windows on your pre-built, which brings us to step number four, which is installing graphics drivers. Now to start this process, I usually download my web browser of choice, and then depending on the graphics card in the system, be it Nvidia or AMD, you search Nvidia drivers or AMD drivers. Considering that we have an Nvidia graphics card in this system, I'll show you that process. At this point, I Google NVIDIA GeForce Experience and then download the installer for that. I like using GeForce Experience because it gives you access to the entire NVIDIA software suite and it keeps your drivers up to date. Once you've downloaded GeForce Experience, launch the installer, bearing in mind that sometimes it'll tell you that the installation can't continue because there's another installation happening. If this is the case, it's because Windows is just installing a base graphics card driver for your system. So just wait for that to finish and then try the NVIDIA installer again. The biggest downside to GeForce Experience is that you do unfortunately have to log in and then wrestle some pretty vague CAPTCHA action. Like, do they consider this a truck or not? Like I always get caught in CAPTCHA loops, it's really annoying. Once that's finished, click on the driver's submenu and then download the latest NVIDIA driver. Click on custom installation because we're not noobs and then just say install drivers and wait for it to finish. The screen may go blank a couple of times. That's perfectly normal. Don't worry about it. And then once the driver installation is finished, restart the system and then it's all yours. You're done with your setup process for your pre-built system. And just like that, you've power washed all of the venereal disease off of your new system, which should help make it feel faster and more stable. And with that, it brings me to the end of a fairly straightforward guide. I didn't want to go into too much detail with any of these things because you buy a pre-built system so that you don't have to do a bunch of setting up, right? And these are the basic steps that I follow when I want to use a pre-built beyond just the review video. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do a follow-up video where I show you how to fix a bunch of common problems that a lot of pre-builds have. And with that, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next one, bye-bye.